Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. Praise God. Good to see you. So glad you're here. Welcome to week four and the conclusion of a series called I Have Decided. Can you just say that with me? I have decided. Amen. Hey, before I get into the message, though, uh, 21 days of prayer ended yesterday and fasting ended yesterday. We ended it with a night of worship. Praise God, somebody. If you missed it, you missed an amazing uh, time uh, just being in the presence of the Lord with God's people, and uh, man, I'm just so thankful for those that joined us on this journey for the past 21 days. Is uh, we're just believing God for what He wants to do in our life, right? Right, and and so uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you missed it, we'll be doing uh, it again in August, and uh, hopefully you'll you'll uh, be able to join us. Uh, today uh, is. Again, sign-ups for small group. If you have not signed up yet, so many of you have, but uh, if you have yet to sign up for a group, they start, they begin a meeting this week, and so uh, make sure that you, I I promise you, you will not regret it. Get in a group, do life with other people, uh, and uh, because we believe life change happens in the context of relationships, so it's not too late to sign up. Uh, And then also one other thing, uh, and I know it's a little last minute, but uh, we uh, I'm going to Papua New Guinea next week uh, on a mission that we are uh, becoming a part of, and um, as a church, and uh, and so <clears throat> the, the the missionary and his wife is a nurse. They, she runs a medical clinic there. Uh, there is a in the nation of, of Papua New Guinea a, a, a critical shortage of uh, tyl- Tylenol and ibuprofen. <clears throat> And so we're just trying to see as many as possible, throwing it out. If you'd like, we've got a bucket uh, out in the lobby. If you'd like to buy some, bring it with you to church next week, drop it in the bucket. We're going to try to fill two suitcases, whatever we're not able to do uh, individually. We're going to uh, make sure the church, uh, that, that we can do that so that we can take two suitcases, tay up in that need. So we'd just like for you to participate and give you an opportunity if you'd like to do that. Amen. Praise God. Hey, uh, grab your message notes. We're going to dive in today. I want to start. Uh, as we close this series, close out the month of January in this year of 2023, I want to start with this question. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Like, what does it mean, right? And we're going to talk about that today because I believe that if, if we were to ask you, hey, talk to me, like, tell me what you think, um, what is it that Jesus is expecting from us? What, what, what do you see it? Uh, that God is asking of us when, it, when we ask the question, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? I think that we would probably get as many answers as people in this room right here. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, you can go to other churches, different churches, and get different answers, right? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? The reason I think that this is so important and uh, that, that we need to just kind of go on this journey uh, today is I think we're living in a generation, quite honestly, that following is something that we do based on personal convenience than we do allowing the Holy Spirit to bring conviction in our life, right? Like I think we're living in an age of social media where it's so easy to like and dislike somebody. Come on, somebody. Like you can follow or unfollow, right? If you want to follow somebody, if you want to accept somebody's friendship on Facebook, like, okay, you can do that. And then in doing that, you can find out kind of where they're living, where they are. They'll post different things that, that show you where they are in life. And, uh, and how many knows you got just that one person ever so often that just takes it way too far? Come on, somebody. Right? Like, like, man, they're too toxic for me. And so you've got the choice that you can hit that button and unfollow them. Come on, somebody. Right? And I think that's kind of like the mentality of following Christ. Like, you will find out today that following is something at a whole, it's a whole lot more than just liking or disliking. 
following or unfollowing. Just think about the word, if you will, like the phrase, like follow or the phrase, I have decided to follow Jesus, right? You think about that, like one of the things that comes to my mind, and for a lot of us that, that um, have been around for a little while, come on somebody, we ain't old, but we've been around a little while, there, there's, a, there's a song that we sing uh, that I have decided to follow Jesus, right? No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. No turning back. When we sing that, we're making a declaration. Like it's an anthem, right, for, for Christians to sing that song. And we're making a declaration. I've decided to go all in. I've decided to give him my life. I, I realize following for Jesus is not a casual thing that I got to go all in. It's not a click or uh, unclick or follow or unfollow. Like it's a real serious thing, right? And I, I, listen, I love having laughter. I love enjoying, uh, I think church should be fun. I think that you should enjoy coming to church, not regret, not, not dread it, right? Come on, somebody. How many have been, uh, like, like I've been, yeah, uh, you know, I think we should have fun. But man, this is going to be a serious message today. Because I, I think that, that from time to time, we need to come to grips and recognize, like there's a story behind that song, I have decided. And it actually comes from the nation of India. Uh, and uh, there's a story that goes that in the 19th century, a couple of hundred years ago, in a Hindu village, a Hindu family had converted to Christianity. And when they converted to Christianity, the village, in, in an attempt to bring a public shame upon that family, uh, and uh, to, uh, because they considered it a capital offense, they brought them on public display to publicly execute them. And as they brought the family to the center, the guy's name was Assam. Uh, and they said, you are going to renounce Jesus or we're going to kill you and your family. And Assam is quoted as saying, I have decided to follow Jesus. And they said, you don't understand. We're very serious about what we're saying. We're going to kill you and your family I have decided to follow Jesus. And they took his wife, executed her in front of him. And he is quoted as saying, no turning back. No turning back. And then they took him. And as they were preparing to execute him, he's quoted as saying, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. There's no turning back. And I think, like, come on, that takes it to a whole nother level. That takes that song to a whole nother meaning. Like, if we understand the cost or commitment involved in following Jesus, right? What does it mean to follow Jesus? Like, how serious are you and I with this whole thing that's called Christianity. And so today I want to dive into it as we close this series out. And it, it, like, like We're not going to look at it what I think and what you think and what the world's view is. We're going to go to Scripture and we're going to find out and identify what is it. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Mark chapter 8, it's in your notes. It'll be on the screen, verse 27. Jesus and his disciples went on, the vill on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Well, Mark, what does that mean? Well, you see, they believed in reincarnation, right? John the Baptist had just uh, got his head cut off, and Elijah had been, uh, you know, dead for a long time, and they were just confused with their answer. But, but verse 39, or 29 says, but what about you, Jesus said? Who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah, which he gave the correct answer. He just, at that point, though, he didn't have a full understanding of what he was saying. 
Because his understanding of Christ was Jewish people had been waiting for thousands of years like for, for the Messiah to come to deliver them so that they could be set free from bondage and uh, you know, living under the Roman influence and rule. Uh, they were waiting for a king, right? Verse 30, Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and, he reje and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, which is what I've come to do today. I want to talk plainly on this subject, like from time to time. Church should be fun. Church should be engaging. I want to be fed. We want people to be fed and we want people to leave. Man, that was a great service. But there's times that we need to get serious and we need to speak plainly. And he says, and, and then look at what it says. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus. Come on, somebody. Began. That's the word. It doesn't say how long it happened. He began to do it, right? No, -uh, that ain't, mm -mm. no, that ain't happening. No, Jesus, you're wrong, right? I think that's funny, right? Verse 33, but when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, get thee behind me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely of human concerns, which I think is the crux of how we define following today. Do you find, define it as what you believe what you want to do and not do, what you accept and what you don't accept, or do you define following as I am yielding? It's from God, and so I'm yielding. It's not about me, but it's about him. Are you with me? Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must what? Deny, what? Deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. That's what followers do. He said, if you really are going to do it and go all in, it's not going to be about your opinion. It's not going to be about what you want to do and how you view things and how you view the world and how you view, review what Christ has done for you, how you review how God wants you to live. Like it's not going to be like, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to deny myself Take up the cross and follow him. Like at some point, I got to make my mind up that as for me, right, I am going to follow Jesus. No matter what the cost, no matter what I have to do, I'm going to deny what I want. Are you hearing me, somebody? Come on. I'm going to deny what I want, and I'm going to take up my cross, and I'm going to follow him. Like I think when we say that, take up your cross, like even that, right? Like when we hear that phrase, we think, yeah, I love the cross. Man, yeah, I'm thankful for the cross. Like we put it on jewelry, right? We, we, we've got cross statues in our home that we put on ourselves. Like we want to adorn ourselves with the identity of what Jesus, our Savior, Lord and Savior has done for us, right? But that's not what it meant to them though. No, it's not. Like the cross was a place of execution. The cross, at that point, Jesus hadn't died. The cross was a place of torture. Like it would be like us hanging an electric chair around our neck. Come on, somebody. Like that's what the cross meant to them. Like, uh-uh, I ain't doing it. No, nope. no, Mark, you're going too far. Jesus, there's no way. Like, no, 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 I can't, I can't do the cross thing. Like I don't want no persecution. Like, I don't want, no, 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 that, I don't want no torture. Are you following me? For whoever wants to save their life, verse 35, will lose it. Can I just give you a newsflash? Like, you're going to lose it anyway. So if you decide, no, Jesus, that's too much. No, Jesus, that's too hard. That's too much you're requiring. You're asking too much. Like, if you decide that, what Jesus is saying, you're going to lose it anyway, right? Like, like at the end of the day, doctors die. Come on, come on, at the end of the day, people that eat organic food dies. They just die with a nasty taste in their mouth. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 
that's messed up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jesus says, like if you think, if you think it's too hard, like, and you try to live life on your own, you try to do it your way, you try to dictate how and what, and I, I, I accept this, but I deny that, I reject this, but I, okay, I'll do this. Like, if you, like you're going to lose it anyway. But he says, whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel, you're going to save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Like in all of us, like we, we, we've thought, like we've had those thoughts and we've had those, like we maybe went to a funeral service and like, man, it, it just seemed like that, wow, it didn't happen, that happened so fast. It, it came by and I didn't experience that, I didn't expect that. And at, one, at some point though, we come to the realization, man, I need to fin- spend more time. Focusing on the eternal, like the afterlife. Like this is not about me, it's about what he wants. Verse 37, or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. In other words, this is a very important decision. Like what does it mean to be a follower? Mark, why are we talking about this? Because we are a good-sized church. Like, like, there's a lot of people that call this church their church home. Like, we're all at different places. On this following scale, we're all at different places. And what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? And what I love, I love about our church is, by the way, is we're all at different places. I love that we are all trying to find our way and none of us have arrived and we're we're going after God in our own way and 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 we're trying to find God and God God is just trying to pull us closer to him and draw us closer to help us to realize like if you if you recognize that that I am I am your savior I died for you like go all in like and we're all at different levels on the scale right Or, or different stages Luke took the same scripture, like he told the same story, but he added a word. I want to read it real quick. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must what? Deny themselves, take up their cross, what? He added the word daily. Take up their cross and fo- daily and follow me, as if to suggest that this is a process, this whole following thing, it's a process. Like, I don't care if you've been in the church 50 years, you ain't arrived yet. Like, I don't think you, if you think you got one up on somebody, you need to recognize, I ain't there yet. I'm still sh- striving to, for perfection. I'm trying to find my place. I'm trying to get closer to God. Like, I'm ready to go all in. And so I want to give you uh, just, I, I want to show you very quickly, uh, and, and then we'll close here, right? I, I want to show you a progression. Let me show you, and, and this actually, this outline comes from Pastor Rick Warren. If you've heard Saddleback Church in California, wrote Purpose Driven Church uh, Life, uh, and, and uh, he, he came up. These are his terms, but I want to apply them uh, very quickly. Uh, five steps of following in Rick Warren's, uh, you know, understanding. Uh, and, and the first one is crowd. Everybody say crowd right? Meaning the first appeal that Jesus made uh, was to the crowd, right? It was to the crowd, which by the way, that's moved churches. That's our first appeal, right? We create, we create some experiences here at Move Church that's not discipleship oriented, but it's crowd oriented. Like, like we got coffee, we got muffins, we got, we got laughter, we got message, we got, a, we got worship. We, you know what I mean? We, we watch your kids, like we teach your kids like and the message of the crowd is come and see. Like you just got to come and see what Jesus has done for me. Are you following me, somebody? And, and then the, the, there's another step, though. Like after come and see, after the crowd is, is congregation, right? Meaning at some point, if you like what you see, come and join. The message there is come and join us, right? Like in my, listen, I want to personally invite you, if you're looking for a church, if you've been trying to find a church home, if you've been kicking the tires at church, at move church, like stop kicking. We're it. 
Join us. Right? Join us. Like, maybe this is your first Sunday, and, and listen, you take all the time you need. Like, you don't have to give. You don't have to serve. Like, we want you to take as much time. Check it out. Right? But at some point, if you like what you see, come and join us. Right? Like, and, and I'm just giving you an invitation. We, we're starting launching small groups today. Do life with us. Go all in. Do, like, like take the next step and join like, first of all, join Jesus, right? Don't, you know, it's not about a church. Join Jesus and then find you a church. Here's the, here's the next level, uh, n- next step uh, on that scale is committed. Everybody say committed. committed. The message at that, that stage, right, is come and grow, right? Like, it's not good enough just to come and see. It's not good enough just to come and join. Like, I, I want to grow. Like, I, I, need, I need something to... To, to, to build the strength, strengthen my marriage. I'm going to get in a marriage small group. I'm, I'm going to do life with other married couples. I'm going to get in a Bible study. I'm going to learn how to, I, I'm going to, I've never prayed before. I'm going to do 21 days. I, uh, teach me how to pray. I'm going to join a prayer group. I'm going to do a FPU class. I'm going to, a men's group, a women's group. Like, I'm just going to go in. I want to grow. I'm going to read God's word. Are you following me, somebody? right? I'm going to get on the M track and find out and discover. I want to grow. Here's another, here's the next step is the core. Everybody say core. Core Core is come and serve, right? Like, is there a place for me to serve so that I can continue to grow, but also help the church help others grow and experience Jesus? Are you following? And I'm just inviting you, like, get on a camera, play a keyboard, play a guitar, Right? Let a, let a kid sit in your lap and, 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 and while mom and dad are, 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 are hearing about Jesus. Right? I mean, just come. Work in the, serve in the parking lot. Whatever it is, let me serve. Come and serve. Mark, are you sure that I promise you it will change your life when you recognize that this is not all about me. You ask the people that serve and they're going to tell you they get more joy serving than they do here in Pastor Mark preach. Come on, somebody. Don't tell me that. I don't want you to tell me that. Please don't tell me. But just, I tell you, <laughs> I promise you. Why? Because you're, ser- like you're putting others before yourself. I, t- I tell you, it'll change your life. Join the crew. Join a crew. And honestly, those four, those four stamps is really the, the vision of Move Church. You know, come and see. The crowd is all about what we do here on the weekend, right? Uh, The congregation is small groups. We're big into small groups. Committed is about getting on the M track, right? The core is all about serving on the crew and joining the crew. That's our vision. But then Jesus took it to another level, right? And he said, I want you to be, I'm commissioning you, commissioned, right? And ultimately the message at this step is just, I want you to come and die. I want you to take up your cross and follow me, right? Come and die, right? And so I I just want to give, like, Jesus is asking for us to lay it all down like a song. Are you willing? Where are you at? Where are you at? Do you really believe in me or not? And so Pastor Mark has just come today to close this series out. I'm just inviting you to go from no commitment to commitment, right? I'm asking you to go from consumer to contributor. I'm asking you to go from Savior to Lord, right? Savior is what God can do for me. Lord is God. What can I do for you, right? And that's my job as a pastor is just to lead you on the journey, all right? But I want to focus on the crowd and I want to focus you on uh, the, you know, the, the next level of commitment. And, and I want you to, I, I want to end very quickly focusing on the two, the, on the people that are in step one and step two on that list. All right. And I want to close this message very quickly here. Acts 2, te- verse 41. Those who accepted his message were what? Baptized. Everybody say baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. All right? All throughout Scripture, the first thing that believers did when they believed, they were baptized. 
They believed, baptized, post-decision. What do you mean by post-decision? Listen, there's a lot of people, in, even inside this room, that you as an infant or a child was baptized because your parents took you to church and they baptized you as infants, right? And not to take anything away from that experience, right? The Bible tells us when you believe, you should be baptized, so that's why I hear it move church. We, we practice, we dedicate children, but we baptize believers, right? When you can acknowledge that. And I want to give you, just close with these three points and then we're done, right? I, I, we're we're going to do spontaneous baptisms today. Well, Mark, I thought baptism Sunday was next week. It was, and it still is. But I felt, you know what? I have decided to follow Jesus. I felt like that there, there was some people that was three in first service and I believe there's some here right here that need to take that step. Why? Because I have decided to follow the example set by Christ. Like, Je like Jesus didn't need, like he sanctified baptism but he didn't need to be baptized. He had no sin. But he did it as our example, right? It's about like a wedding band, like a wedding band he wanted it to be the wedding band of Christianity. This does not make me married. This just shows people that I am married and I belong to somebody else, right? So I wear it proudly because I belong to Chantel. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Follow by ex my example, Paul said, as I follow the example of Christ. And I pray you make that your life verse. 1 John 2, 4. Someone may say, I am a Christian. I am on my way to heaven. I belong to Christ. But if he doesn't do what Christ tells him to, he's what? He's a liar. Well, listen, I'm not a hard preacher. But that's the truth. Some scriptures you can't get around, right? And I'm just telling you. Here, here's the second reason. I have decided to demonstrate my changed life. Again, wear the wedding band. Like all of us need to demonstrate the fact that Jesus has changed us, Right? 1 Peter 3, 21, that by, the, that by the way is what baptism pictures for us. In baptism, we show that we have been saved from death and doomed by the resurrection of Christ, not because of our bodies are washed clean by the water, but because in being baptized, we are turning to God and asking him to cleanse our hearts from sin. Like it's not the water. There's nothing magical about the water. Do you have the faith to believe? It's all about your faith. And here's number three. I have decided to declare, in closing, I've decided to declare my commitment publicly. Everybody say publicly. publicly. Like this is a big deal to God. The verse we read at the beginning, follow me. Like don't be ashamed. Like there's nothing to be ashamed about. And that's why we do public baptisms, right? Some say Mark in faith supposed to be private? No, the world wants you to think it's private, right? But Jesus said, I want you to be a light set on a hill. Don't hide the light under a bushel, right? Like, like, it's like me. If I only wear this wedding band when I'm at home, but when I go out the door, I, I lay it on the shelf. First of all, Miss Chantel ain't gonna be happy, you know what I mean? <laughs> And she's going to be asking questions, and there's going to probably be some blood and teeth and, and hair and, you know, all of that too. But, like, I don't wear this. Like, I, I, I don't wear this. Like, wearing a wedding band, I don't do it just when I'm at home. I do it when I go out because it lets every other woman on planet earth know that you can't have this. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> He's taken. Never a dull moment. He's taken. This is funny. He's taken. I belong to Chantel. 
Matthew 10, 32 says, If anyone publicly acknowledge me as his friend, I will openly acknowledge him as my friend before my Father in heaven. But if anyone publicly denies me, I will openly deny him before my Father in heaven. So what do we do? We take next steps. And so I'm inviting, I'm encouraging everyone. We're, we're doing spontaneous baptisms. You, you came here dry, and some of you are going to leave wet today. Right? Uh, like, you know, well, Mark, next week's baptism Sunday. I, I'll do it next week. You know what? We're not promised tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Could you bring me that, please? Because I know that some of you right now, you got excuses going on in your head as to why. We got a towel to dry you. We got a hair dryer. We got a brush. We got shorts. Well, Mark, they don't fit me. We got every size. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We got a shirt that says, I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. Are you following me? Well, Mark, I want to do it with my family's here. I want to do it with my friends here. Don't worry. We've got a photographer to take your picture and you can post it on Facebook when you get home. No excuses. No excuses. As for me, I have decided. Could you stand to your feet? I have decided. Like if you want to be baptized today, we've got our, our we, we've got a team of people out in the lobby that's waiting for you, like right now. We've got a bag prepared just for you. We'll, we'll get you so that you can make the decision. As for me. I have decided to follow Jesus. You can leave. You can go on out right now if you'd like to. If the team is there, would you bow your heads? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. We thank you for you, what you did for us on the cross. Maybe there's someone here today that it's not about baptism, but the first decision that you need to make is to follow Jesus. If you're here today and you need to make a decision to follow Jesus, Come on, I, I want to lead you in a prayer right now and invite everybody to pray with us. But come on, the first step, the first thing that you need to do is to declare Jesus the Lord of your life. Come on, if that's you today, if you need to make that decision, come on, let's pray this prayer together. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I want to pick up my cross, deny myself, and follow you. Forgive me of all my sins. Change me from the inside out. I don't want to be the same. I want you to be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, everybody says, Amen. 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 Now, go and be baptized. Go and be baptized. Come on, let's close it out in song. We'll see you in the lobby. Go and be baptized.